Buckerman's Log, Year 2, Day 33. So we finally arrived at Duna after a long, long trip. Airshell's still as excited about everything after all this time as she was right at the beginning. It's getting a bit annoying, really. After our survey of the asteroid, the company that we did that for owed us a fuel refill as part of the deal. They took their own sweet time getting to us, and since our ship had run out of mild propellant after escaping from Crow's Nest Station around Minmus and its weird instability thing, and also the asteroid rendezvous, I couldn't do anything about the docking except turn the right way and wait. I must have done all the system checks on the pod ten times while waiting, and I was pretty sure that we were ready for the long trip to Duna by the time the refueler finally got to us. As far as I could tell, Aeroshell spent most of her time just gawking at Kerbin, and it was quite a sight to see, but I couldn't keep myself from going bored out of my mind just looking at it. Anyway, the docking proceeded quite smoothly. Uh, they did bring a full load of fuel for us, as well as topping off our monopropellant tanks, so that was nice. Um, I'm not too sure about the design of that pod. It looked a lot like my ship, actually, so I guess there was a certain symmetry to that. The full tanks would leave us with more than 2,500 meters per second of Delta V, and that was definitely enough to get to Duna, twice as much as we needed to make the transfer. But we would also have to try and make orbit without aero braking, and so that would take a little bit more. And then my plan was to rendezvous with the station around Duna. The main station that allows regular visitors is Stadler Towers. And so that was my plan to try and pick up a job there. Other stations are private. I tried to get clearance to land at Duna Colony on the surface, actually. And they reviewed my ship and said that it wasn't up to their safety standards. They wanted some parachutes and perhaps a heat shield. Uh, I don't know what they were on about. I think I could have gotten it down safely just fine. And of course, they had uh, fueling resources so we could get back to orbit again. But I guess they just wanted to make things difficult. Uh, which, you know, I mean, it's a big opportunity to land on Duna. And uh, they like to restrict that to people. I think the first time I really saw Aeroshell serious and grim was when we were starting out our burn for Duna. I think there was a little bit of trepidation there as we uh, left Kerbin and Kerbin's SOI and headed out. Uh, she seems really at home in orbit around things, but uh, going between one orbit and another uh, makes her a little bit more hesitant, I think. She was a little bit calmer after we finished the burn for some reason, though. I don't know, but still not her normal excited self. Anyway, so we headed out of Kerbin SOI and on our long journey to Duna, and little did I know uh, how long that would feel with two people in a pod like that. Now I get along fine with show we're friendly with each other, but uh, after that kind of time it's impossible for two people not to get on each other's nerves every now and again, and we sure did. But uh, we, we kept it friendly, and finally we made it over to Duna, and we saw the great sight of Ike going around the planet. I didn't really think much about Ike until that point. Obviously it would be a great scanning target and I was planning to pick up contracts for it, but uh, it's, it's looking pretty good at this point as far as a place we might get quite a lot of work. Anyway, we approached Duna fairly carefully. We had a nice tight periapsis and started retro-burning in good time and easily made orbit without any trouble. Again, uh, no aero capture here. We had to do it all with our Delta V, but there was no problem with that and I was able to deploy scanners and start getting some data on the surface, uh, possibly to sell to somebody at Stadler Towers even before we arrived. We could have something to hand over to them and maybe tempt them so that they would give us other contracts. It was good to see that the scanners were all working after being tucked away for so long in the coldness of space, you never know really, until you bring them out again. I had gone into a high orbit in order to make the rendezvous with Stalar Towers easier, but uh, even though I had initially set the rendezvous to 7 kilometers, uh, for some reason it seemed to drift. And so by the time I was at my apoapsis, it was reading 50 kilometers and I had to adjust. I wasn't sure about how it could drift like that. Uh, but I didn't think too much of it until we got closer to the station. Everything looked fine. It's a very distinctive station. It's got uh, towers with cupolas 
and lots of room for habitation. You dock on the side of the towers, and then it's got a body with the fuel reserves and solar panels. All uh, lit in red. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary as we approached the dock and got clearance. But then as we got closer, things started to happen. We saw we saw some wiggling in the towers. At first I thought it was natural and, you know, that's just how the towers were. But it uh, quickly became obvious that this was not just a normal wiggling. And I started to recognize this as the same phenomenon we saw with the crow's nest around Minmus. So I started to back off with RCS. I, I still tried to line up with the docking port in case the situation resolved itself. I tried to communicate with the station, but got no response. And the, the wiggling just got worse, so I, I backed away quickly. There's been no word about anybody else having this trouble, and when I submitted my report on the Minmus situation, everybody thought I had gone crazy, but but here it is again. So, so it must be just me somehow? My ship? I don't know, this pod? Should I even think about trying to approach another station and trying to dock there until I figure this out? I can't decide, and so here we are. Me and Arachel stuck in orbit around Duna with pretty much nowhere to go. I think now that maybe scanning Ike and trying to find a place to land there to drill for ore would probably be the best way to go, but I'll have to do the math to see whether I can make the transfer and make the landing around Ike safely with the fuel I have left. Uh, I don't have any offers to give me a, a free refueling, and I'm not sure if I can call on somebody to refuel us safely with what happened at the station. So far it's only been stations though. Uh, the refueling vessel that we had around Kerbin didn't have any problems. But I'll have to think about that and I'll talk it over with Arachel. Anyway, so that's the situation as we continue around Duna and I'm still keeping the scannings going and hopefully I can sell them somewhere. This is Buck Kerman, signing off.